um, you know, have just about an hour with one another. I would like to get started as others are filtering into the room. Um, my name is Sarah Maslin Fathery, and I'm the Director of Parent Relations here at the college. And I just want to thank you so much for joining us for one of these virtual summer programs for parents and families at Dickinson. I'm so thrilled that your family has found the college to be the right choice for your student. And I can't wait to officially welcome you to Dickinson in August and meet you in person when you arrive on campus in just about a month. Um, before we get started, as I had mentioned before, for those of you who logged on right away, if you wouldn't mind uh, renaming yourself as you log on so that we can see your first and last name, um, or if two of you are sitting there, you can write both your first and last names, that's fine as well, but it'll help us to assign the breakout rooms as we get to that portion of the evening. Um, and if you could put yourself on mute for the time being, that would be wonderful. We'll have plenty of time to chat later on, um, but feel free to use the chat function right now. If you have any questions, we'll be monitoring that and hopefully we'll be able to respond to you in real time. Um, so for many of you, you may have attended one of our virtual parent summer programs that we've hosted over the past couple of weeks, but tonight's program will be structured a little bit differently than the other two in the series that we've already hosted. Um, you might notice that because first off, it's not set up like a webinar. So you don't just see the people who are speaking. Um, I might just be a very small box on your screen um, because we want you to uh, have an opportunity to see who else is in this class, the parents of individuals in this class. And instead of just sharing information with you, which we will also be doing because of course we want you to feel prepared to send your student to campus. Um, we also want you to connect with one another. So as I mentioned, we'll be utilizing the breakout room functionality for the second half of our time together. So as many of you have probably gathered from exploring Dickinson as a prospective parent in the time since your student has enrolled, we have an extremely engaged community of parents that foster a very supportive environment for one another and for their students. And our families and our volunteers are so invested in the future of not just their student, but of also the college in general. And we have some great volunteers with us here tonight. I hope that many of you will become volunteers for us. Um, and I personally look forward to getting to know you and your families really well over the next four years and carrying those relationships well beyond the time when your student graduates. Um, so I just wanna thank you all for taking time out of your evening to be here with us, um, to connect with members of the college staff and other parents and um, to learn more about this wonderful community that we're looking forward to welcoming you to. Um, so with that, I'd like to uh, pass things off to my colleague, George Stroud, Dickinson's Vice President of Student Life, to introduce himself and also say a few words to you now. Well, thank you, Sarah. I uh, appreciate it. And hello, everyone. Um, uh, let me just say that, um, again, George Stroud, um, I've been at Dickinson now for three years as the Vice President for Student Life and Dean of Students. And this, I, let me tell you, I am the most excited about starting a new year um, right now. Um, you know, I, we work in, in student life and we work for the students. And so having um, this experience and thinking about all of our students finally returning to campus is such an exciting experience. And so my entire staff, we are, we can't wait. And so there's a lot of work that's been put in place and we're still putting the final touches on it to make sure that we welcome um, you and your, your students. And I, and I say that intentionally, you and your students, because we recognize that, you know, it's not just the students that are coming, you know, you too are part of the Dickinson family. And we want you to make, we wanna make sure that you're aware of that and that we are aware of that as well. And so just a couple things um, for you to be aware of. Um, right now, one of the biggest things that we are working on at this point in time in student life is orientation. Students need to understand what they're coming into, how, what the community is about, and so on and so forth. And so um, the plans for orientation are pretty much in place. I was just in a meeting earlier this week in which we were putting the final touches on the orientation program. I'm excited about it because it's actually going to, there are going to be some new wrinkles to this orientation that are different than any of the ones that we've done in the past. So it should be really exciting for all of us, not just you. Um, what I will say is um, 
and you'll be getting more information coming out to you. But move in day, some dates, some key dates for you if you don't have them yet. Um, move in day is Wednesday, August 25th. Wednesday, August 25th. Um, and we will be moving people in between the hours of 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. Now, this, this point that I'm about to make it is important. You will be receiving, each family will be receiving times in which we um, want people to move in by because we want to do this in an orderly process, um, not only for us working it to make sure that we can attend to you, but we also don't want people standing in long lines as they're trying to move into their different buildings. So we're asking uh, families, once you, you get the information to try as best as possible to adhere to the time slot um uh that that you've been given and then that'll make the process go that much better right um with that many of you are probably asking well my child has not received their room assignment yet and that is true um residence life i was just in a meeting with them they are working on the um first year um room assignments now uh they should be wrapping that up shortly um uh, just so you know just full transparency. We had moved some of the timelines back um, for the upper class move in. And so we finished that, we wrapped that up. Now we're moving to um, the first year move in and, and placing those. So those that information should be coming out to uh, you and your your students uh, probably within I, if I within the next week or two, I, I would guess that those uh, that information would be out to you. Okay. Um, and once that's sent out, roommate information will also be attached with that so that people can start to um, form those relationships beforehand, because that is important for roommates to, to start talking to each other even before they arrive on campus. And so we'll want that to happen as well. The full orientation process begins immediately after we're done with move-in. So um, as I said, move-ins from eight to one, and then orientation will begin and orientation will occur from the 25th through the 29th. Uh, and students will go through a process of, obviously we have to talk about rules and policies, rules, you know, I'm the Dean of Students, I'm the rules guy. Um, so that definitely has to be a part of it. But the big piece of orientation is forming, starting to create those bonds within the class, right? These students are gonna be together for four years. And so we want to create an environment in which um, there are some activities that are going on in which students start to, to know a little bit about each other and we'll, we'll start moving through that process at that time. Another key piece that um, some of you may be aware of is we have a, a program that we, we've changed now and it's called the Explore More program. Um, and in the past, if you know anyone that came to Dickinson in the past, we, we would have called it our pre-orientation program. And, but we're, what we're doing now, in the past, people will come a couple of days before actual orientation and go through a, a, an experience together, a group of maybe 20 students and experience together. What we've decided was we're going to move that back into the first few weeks of classes. Reason being, we had feedback from our students that said, you know what, we may have attended that the PREO program had we known folks beforehand. And so um, the thought was we get students on campus, they get to interact with each other before they go away on the, the, an immersion trip of some sort. And so if your son or daughter has not signed up for an Explore More program, it is my understanding that there are still a few slots remaining. Um, I would encourage you to do that. And so uh, what they do, they have an opportunity, they, they're theme based. So there are um, they'll go away for a weekend and explore different topics. So there's one on theater, one on cooking, leadership, sustainability. Um, there are a number of issues. So uh, I would encourage you to go to the orientation site website. Um, so if you just go to the Dickinson website and in the search bar, click in orientation. And then on the side, it will be explore more click on that tab and it will give you more information about that particular program. Uh, but I think that'll be really important for many of our students to, to really connect with other students who have like interests. Um, and, and my experience has been folks who uh, in, engage in those types of activities often um, find their niche group a little bit sooner. Um, and, and many of us know that 
when you find that group of students that you connect with early on, it makes your experience that much better. And so that's what we're trying to do, create those opportunities for our students to do that. Uh, just uh, uh, another thing, our wellness center um, is really gearing up to receive our students. And the reason why I want to bring this up, you know, we've all been through a, a pretty tough year and a half. Um, and we understand that students are coming to us and, and they um, want, many are going to want to talk about different things that may have happened in their life. And so we have a new executive director for wellness who, uh, her name is Lauren Strong. She just began and uh, she has been working with the staff to make sure that they are geared up, ready to receive our students. And so um, just want everyone to know that we, we are preparing for not only to make sure our students are engaged socially, but we're also preparing to engage with students and meeting them where they are with whatever their needs are so that we can um, have a successful college career um, here at Dickinson. The other thing that you need to know about um, student life is that we are, and we all consider ourselves in, in um, this area, student advocates. Our goal is to do whatever we can to support students and to make sure that they have a successful four years and walk across that stage, walk down the Old West steps and receive that diploma in four years. And so what you will find throughout, whether or not it is in my office, the Dean of Students office, um, student leadership, residence life, the athletic department, or even um, I, I say this and people say, really, they're, they're advocates to um, our office of DPS, Department of Public Safety. They view themselves as student advocates. Clearly, we all have individual roles that we play and we do that, but we, we are all here to serve the students. And so um, I am going to finish up by saying that, you know, I really look forward to working with each and every one of your students, getting an opportunity to meet you at, at MOVEN. I am during moving, I'm all over the place. So um, if, if you see me in one of your buildings, maybe carrying a piece of luggage in, um, in and out of buildings, please stop and say hello. Um, because again, I'm not only do I wanna get to know your students, but I also wanna get to know uh, you all as well. And um, I look forward to meeting your students and really um, shaking each and every one of their hands as they walk up the steps to Old West during our sign-in ceremony. And then the most important piece, seeing them again in four years as they walk back down and I shake their hands as they come out of Old West to receive their diploma. So thank you. Um, and I, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. And so with that, I am gonna um, pass this along to my colleague, Sam Brandauer, who is the Associate Provost and Executive Director for the Center of Global Studies and Engagement. So welcome everybody. Thank you, Sarah, for inviting me to be a part of this. It's so exciting to see all these faces. I have a daughter starting high school, so I'm not quite where you are yet, but after a year of lots of time at home with her, it's sort of exciting to think about what high school will mean and having her be back in school in person. <laughs> so looking forward to that. Um, I uh, am here this evening um, to talk a little bit about um, sort of our global campus. I think hopefully for many of your um, sons and daughters and children who are, have chosen to come to Dickinson, a big part of the appeal was our study abroad programs, our international curriculum, um, and our large percentage of um, international students. I don't know how many of you know this, but we are about 13% international students. So in the incoming class, uh, my team will be working very closely with George's team to welcome our international students. We have about 70 of them coming into this incoming class. We'll be coming to campus and sometimes to the US for the very first time. And I know there are some international parents on this call. Um, it's been a challenging and interesting time for international students this last year and a half. We had a lot of them stay on campus with us throughout a lot of the pandemic. Um, and we worked with students all over the world to help them continue their Dickinson education. There was a lot of effort and support. I would like to echo um, George's work um, in the Center for Global Study and Engagement. We are uh, really um, student advocates too. You know, we see ourselves first and foremost as a really student-centered student, student -centered place that helps students learn and grow and advocate specifically for international students and all their sort of unique needs um, and help them really find a sense of belonging um, at Dickinson with, with everybody. 
Um, and, you know, the other really exciting part of my job that hopefully you'll be soon talking to your students about is um, all of our wonderful education abroad and off campus study opportunities. 65% of students at Dickinson will spend will spend time studying abroad, most of them for a semester, um, many of them for two semesters, some of them for a short term experience. Um, it's been quite a, a ride. Um, you know, in the spring of 2020, we worked to bring about 70 students home from study abroad and support them and their ongoing academic work. Um, it was um, a challenge, but successful. Uh, we have suspended study abroad um, until just recently. We had our first group of students um, head off to Spain just at the beginning of July. Um, and we rest so we have officially restarted and we'll have students abroad this fall. Um, so we're really excited about that. And we look forward to meeting and talking to your students um, more. Um, so again, I'm just here to, to welcome all of you, um, to remind you, um, you know, what a great global community you've become a part of. So it's not just, you know, Carlisle and sort of all the places you represent, but we really have a, a great global footprint that will have a big impact on your students' experience. And we look forward to getting to know all of the new international students and all of your students throughout their four years at Dickinson. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sam, and thank you, George. Um, I just want to echo their excitement. You know, we have a very diverse community here. We have a global community, and we can't wait to share all of that with your families um, as your student begins their time with us at Dickinson. Um, at this point, I'd love to introduce uh, the chairs of our Parents Leadership Council, Andrew and Lori Flame. The names might be familiar to you because they've been sending out wonderful newsletters to first year families to try and share some inside tips with you. Um, I'm sure that they've responded to many of your questions through our Facebook group and through other outreach that they have done. Um, the Parents Leadership Council is a wonderful opportunity for families who really want to be very strong ambassadors for the college. Um, they care deeply about the success of our students and the future success of the college. And Andrew and Lori are just exceptional partners for me, and I am so privileged to be able to work with them. So um, I'd like to welcome them to say a few words. Thanks, Sarah. That's a lot of buildup. I hope uh, I hope I can live up we to We don't want to disappoint. So those of you that um, we've spoken with or you've seen on prior programs, Lori and I are going to have a division of labor so we don't take each other's lines. So she'll slap me. And, you know, so I'm going to talk a little bit about um, just kind of who we are and who our daughter Rachel is. Um, Lori will talk about Rachel's experience and then I'll come back and, and talk for a moment about um, our experience as volunteers um, and, and so forth. So so our daughter, Rachel, is a rising senior in the class of 2022, which freaks us both out. Mm -hmm. um, three years ago, um, we were, we, we were sitting you where are. you are. Um, and really, other than some admissions events, um, we had absolutely, and Rachel having been accepted, we had no connection to Dickinson. Neither Lori or I went to Dickinson. Um, and um, we're, we're both Penn State alums, actually. Um, and Rachel obviously had no connection. So uh, we were right where you were and Rachel's our only child. So um, we have to just, right. just, just like you, for us, it's uh, learning about, it was learning about what to expect. Uh, so let me tell you a little about Rachel and, and us. So Rachel is a biochemistry and molecular biology major. Um, we, the three of us live in Wilmington, Delaware, but um, we lived in Bluebell, Pennsylvania. Uh, until right after Rachel started at Dickinson. We actually relocated um, within a month after Rachel went up to school. Um, as I said, none of us had any connections prior to Rachel's senior year, really her senior year in high school when she started looking at Dickinson. Um, and what attracted Rachel and, and frankly us, but more importantly, Rachel to Dickinson um, was that, that, that warm and, and personal feeling that she got when she was on campus and, and meeting people. Um, hopefully that's the same sense uh, that you've got. Um, so Rachel has, um, you know, we, I, I remember sitting three years ago and, and hearing people say what their, their, their student that's been at Dickinson, what they do. This long uh, list, a long of, list stuff. of things. And now I feel like I'm we doing, now we have doing the same thing. So I'm going to brag just for a second. So <laughs> forgive me, but 
uh, in, in two years and three years, you're going to do the same thing. Um, so a little bit to understand kind of Rachel's involvement. Rachel um, is a member of the women's tennis team and has been for four years. Um, she, uh, her, a young lady that we never expected would be interested in sorority. She decided she wanted to try sorority and look into it. And she is a Kappa Alpha Theta. Um, she has done research and is continuing to do research with professors. She's been a teaching assistant for the introductory biology course. Um, and this summer is serving as a presidential fellow for the college and, and talking with alumni, um, which has been a great experience uh, for her. So I'm gonna turn it over to Lori, but first I wanna congratulate each of you. This is a big deal, uh, sending, your, sending your kids off to, to college and to Dickinson and, um, They've obviously done very well to be at Dickinson. So uh, take the bow while you can before you get into the craziness. So, Lori? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know all of you, well, a lot of you anyway, might see me typing away on Facebook, trying to answer questions, trying to answer the questions in the um, parent parent newsletters that we had gotten a lot of. Um, but I would say the number one question that I get is, you know, what is your biggest piece of advice for students coming to Dickinson? What can you tell us as parents? And, you know, I think it's really a two tier thing. Um, when Rachel decided on Dickinson, um, she really made a very conscious decision that she was going to get involved, that she was going to, um, meet a lot of new people, try not a lot of new things, kind of step outside her comfort zone. And she did that. She did that both um, socially and she also did it academically too. And that is what has really, really paid off in spades for her. Um, the opportunities such as the research assistant and the teaching assistant, those things come because people, know, or because professors and um, advisors know you. Um, I think that as far as when she first got to school, she took advantage of all the kinds of introductory programs the school offered, even ones that she wasn't 100% sure, no, is that like cool enough to go to? She went, there was like some in inflatable bouncy event that um, she went to and she had a great time. She, Don't let her fool you. She would have never missed that event. Right, right. Because like she likes the inflatable bouncy things, but that's besides <laughs> the point. Um, she did do, it was called pre-orientation at the time and it was for her, she did a, uh, a day off campus doing um, ropes, a ropes course, and then did, I think it was cooking and going to restaurants at night. Her closest friends to this day came out of that pre-orientation experience. So those are really, really, really invaluable experiences. Um, you know, she tried different things. She um, was a member of Triton. She went to the Asbel Center for Jewish Life. She's tried different things. Some things stick more than others. Um, she also has commitments because of being on the women's tennis team and other things, but overall she gave everything a try and she made a lot of friends and, you know, just to this day, I think keeps meeting people. The other thing I would say about it is that on the academic side, I think I had already mentioned, but um, the advising that your students are getting right now, that can continue through their entire college career. Rachel, um, once she selected her major and she selected an advisor, she sees her every single semester before choosing classes. Rachel usually knows what she's going to pick, but it kind of is that confirmation and it's kind of been, well, if this doesn't work, can this fit into your schedule? A lot of discussion. And um, that was part of how, you know, getting to know her advisor when an opportunity for um, a teaching assistant came up, it was Rachel's advisor that mentioned her name. Um, it was in going to the career center that she's had an opportunity for an internship because the people at the career center mentioned her name to this company. So the more that they can do and kind of get themselves known, I think is, you know, really important. I guess yeah, so, uh, no, I, I agree. And, um, you know, things like 
things, the, the support is there, um, but they just have to step out and, and take advantage of it. Um, obviously there's other support for them um, if certain situations arise, but um, they, they, they need to step out and, and go and meet the person in the career center and it'll kind of take off from there or go to the professor's um, office hours and, and so forth. Oh, Talk yeah. to office hours some, are important. there's tutors if they, you know, Rachel took advantage of that when, when there were things that she had questions about. Um, so that's a great thing to do. Um, and by the way, just like, uh, I just want to repeat what George Stroud said. Um, so Lori mentioned Prio, that is now the um, Explore, Explore More program. More. So definitely that was a, great way to meet people and you're meeting people with similar interests because and you're choosing the groups. groups so definitely um that was great for rachel so um that's a that's a bit about rachel's experience so what has our experience been like um as parents and and what opportunities did we have and and how do we end up quite frankly sitting here in front of you which, which is nothing we would ever would have expected three years ago um, so as I said, and this is, I always say this because, you know, we're not alumni, right? Our connection and our involvement didn't come because we graduated, either of us, from Dickinson. So, really impressed. so the, um, you know, the, the, the overall, I guess, comment is Dickinson really gave us the opportunity to get involved. Um, you know, we started going to the admitted students events and the, the send off Summer events. Off which were in person pre-COVID, um, but um, your students are having some of those. That gave not only Rachel a chance to meet people, but hopefully in our breakout rooms, you'll get to meet some more parents as well and gave us that opportunity. Um, frankly, we were surprised that we were invited to some of those events and, and how parents were welcomed. Um, and it provided us that opportunity to meet other parents going through what we were going through of sending our our only child off to uh, off to college, um, so that was really great. Um, now, Sarah probably won't admit this, but you know, I, I think maybe it was because we became regulars at those uh, <laughs> pre-freshman events. Um, Sarah had approached us um, at the beginning of Rachel's freshman year about some opportunities to become involved at Dickinson. Um, the timing was good for me. I had relocated. I was involved in other volunteer work that that had to go by the wayside because of distance. And so Lori and I both were, were happy uh, to get involved and, and Sarah in particular invited us to the PLC. And it's been a great, great experience and great working with Sarah um, along the way. Um, what I'll say also, um, I'm watching time so we make sure we hit our breakout room um, on time is Lori and I were conscious of the fact that this is Rachel's Dickinson experience, right? Right. It's not Andrew and Lori's Dickinson experience. Even though it sounds so, like that right now. So um, at each step of the way, from the time Sarah first spoke with us, um, Sarah will recall that we said, well, let us think about it and we want to talk to Rachel. So we wanted to make sure Rachel was comfortable with our involvement. And our PLC involvement is really separate from Rachel's mm -hmm. experience in, in many ways. Um, so we accepted the invitation to PLC see and now here we are um like lori said and it's really lori uh lori's a liaison for the college to the facebook page um we introduced and hopefully you're getting the parent to parent newsletters the second edition just went out um in in general we found that um we were welcomed as parents on campus we were welcomed for for parent alumni weekend there's events there for parents and their students lots of opportunities um, if you if you want to um, get involved, um, there's an op and, and that's okay with your student, most importantly mm -hmm. as well. Um, there's there's an opportunity. Just reach out to the college, reach out to Sarah, and uh, she'll give you the op she'll give you that opportunity in the college. Well, Lori wanted to add one thing. One quick thing that I wanted to add was um, kind of back on my subject a little bit, but in talking about how we did ask Rachel whether this was something she wanted, um, you know, that was part of our kind of our whole theme. You know, if Rachel had a problem at school, we were there to help talk it out, but she had to take the incentive to go to the school or find the right people and talk. The school, 
um, is very, they really encourage the kids to come to them first. So we were not, if there was an issue or a problem, we were not the first person that they saw. It was definitely trying to work it out through Rachel um, and going in that direction. And it's the same thing I try to encourage people on the Facebook page um, to really, your kids really have to take the reins. They have to open their emails. They need to, um, get on top of scheduling, all kinds of stuff like that. They will definitely get the gist of it once they are on campus. Yeah. So be there to support them, but let them take the steps. Yeah. Sarah, back to you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> and what a great way to close that out. You know, obviously we're all here because we want to be able to provide you with information so that you feel confident in supporting your students. Um, and so thank you, Andrew and Lori and George and Sam. Um, thank you for everything that you've shared here. And I know that everybody is eager for the opportunity to connect with other incoming Dickinson parents. So in just a couple of moments, we're going to move into breakout rooms. Um, you should have, you know, hopefully if it all worked out, you should have people from your general region in your breakout room. Um, it might be a little bit of a mix, but that's also a great thing because, you know, we're a diverse community and we want people to get to know all of, all of the Dickinson community. Um, as uh, Andrew and Lori mentioned, there are great opportunities to volunteer for the college and to get involved. And there are a number of members of our Parents Leadership Council here with us tonight and other college staff members who will be facilitating discussions in your breakout rooms. Um, and I use the word facilitated really lightly because we really hope that, you know, after introducing yourselves and finding some common ground that you'll feel comfortable um, you know, just chiming in and asking your questions and making the most of this time that we have together. Um, we will be leaving the program from the breakout rooms. So we're not coming back into the general room. So around seven o'clock, you should get a, a little warning in the chat that says, you know, we're going to be concluding soon. Um, so try and wrap up your conversations. But remember, you can use the chat or I can help to connect other people afterwards if you have um, other questions uh, or if you'd like to connect with somebody who you met here this evening. Um, so again, you know, since this is farewell before breakout rooms, um, I really appreciate all of you joining us tonight, um, your interest in getting to know other members of the Dickinson family. Thank you so much to our volunteers and co-hosts this evening. I really, of course, appreciate every second of the time that you give to Dickinson and the many ways that you support us. And um, shortly, you will get an invitation to join a breakout room. So I hope that you will accept that invitation and enjoy the conversation you have with other Dickinson families tonight. So thank you.
much. You have the cap. Yeah, we're in the wrong no. one. How do you get to the right one? They put you in there. That's why you have to stay on. Well, they should have known our thing already. Thank you. 